The value of having a death over dinner. I think the value is it because we barely talk about it. I mean, we could be sitting on a tube, we'll think about it, maybe for a flash of a moment. Maybe you see a movie, makes you think about death, you read a book. But yeah, um, it's an opportunity. I guess it gives you an opportunity just to have a conscious conversation about it with other people other than yourself. I think, I think we should talk about death if we can, um, because I think it can help in the future to s stop arguments and stop people kind of um, deciding what was best for the person who's died. Um, but I don't know if that's always possible. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a good idea to discuss death before death, if, if we can. But we were all courageous, in, in a way. I think we all have to be courageous. Maybe as human beings, we, we need to be courageous about death because it's coming. Whether we like it or not, we have to prepare for it. I think that to be born is, is a tremendous gift in itself and that it's intrinsic in life that death accompanies it. Yeah, because if you read the news, anybody who bloody reads the news, you are just completely overwhelmed by death everywhere. So maybe we'll talk about it too much. <laughs> it just felt like death was running after me. I couldn't escape it. And although I was trying to just blank it because I was not ready to face it, it was just coming to me everywhere. Like, look, this person died, this person died. I mean, when I talk to my children about it, oh, mum, don't, don't start. You know, you're always on. I said, but you have to talk about it so that it doesn't come as a complete and utter shock. You know, we've all got to go. We may not want to, but we have to. Grab a cucumber, thank you. Thank you. So, we're going to start off by making a toast to someone we've lost and what they meant to you. Um, so, the most recent person I lost was my grandma, Mammy. Um, she died two years ago, two days, two years ago, two days ago, um, and her going was just we haven't really accepted it still. To be honest, mm. my mum definitely hasn't accepted it, and we had to watch her die. That was mm. like nothing I've ever experienced before. Yeah. Um, but actually, it's made me appreciate life. If mm. there's any silver lining, that was it. No. To oh. mummy. Yeah. <laughs> cheers. 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 <laughs> um, I will show you something for that. Okay. So it's um, my necklace with the little dolphin. Um, after my dad died, my grandma bought one for me, one for my sister, because she said she she felt so sorry that he couldn't leave anything to us. So she just bought it for us, and she said for us to remember as if it came from him. She was always telling us all of the crazy stories, he, all the things he did when he was a child, all the funny things. So we, we would have good memories of him because we were so young when he died that it was just pain. So she just wanted to bring a bit of light and she really did. So, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. That was selfless of him, wasn't it, to do that for us? Yes, completely. I suppose my toast will be to I was just thinking who, but um, definitely my Auntie Nelly. So my Auntie Nelly looked after me when I was a little girl. And um, recently, in these last few months, I am really grateful that I had her in my life because I think if, she, if, if I hadn't lived with her when I was young, I don't think I would have experienced love and I don't think I would have been able to love. So I'm really grateful now that I had mm. her for the years that I did to show me unconditional love because I think I would have been a very cold uh, person if I hadn't had her in my life. Yeah, cheers, Antonelli. Cheers. Antonelli. Cheers, Antonelli. Well, my mother, she was the absolute world. I was an only child, and to say I was spoiled is an understatement because she would have given me her heart if necessary. And every time I eat strawberries, I remember I was about seven. And I'd eaten my strawberries and my dad had eaten his. 
And Mum hadn't got to hers yet. And I said, oh, can I have a Mum? And she said, yeah, go on, darling. And I ate her strawberries. And that's mm. every time I eat <laughs> strawberries now. She was the world. Oh, God. Yeah. Mm. To, to my mother, um, her name was Myra. Her maiden name was Zlotnik. Myra Zlotnik, her parents were Polish, Russian. And she died about three and a half years ago in Cape Town. And I returned um, to Cape Town, sat vigil with her for about ten days when she told me um, much about her life. She was a ballet dancer, travelled the world dancing. And um, before I left her, she'd said, um, don't cry for me, it's been a wonderful life, but it's enough already. Mm. So to my mum. Cheers. Cheers. Mom. Cheers. My younger brother, there was a 10 year age gap between us. And I sort of mentored him as he was growing up. But he was incredibly hard working and he was always involved in business engagements. And um, he just died suddenly. Um, one morning, he went off for a business engagement and just collapsed and died. What it made me realize is the importance uh, of remaining connected with the family. But um, he was tender hearted, he was really kind, and he didn't. Um, differentiate um, in a negative way between people. Mm. I can't think of, of a time when I ever heard him complain or grumble about anything. He was just so incredibly positive and determined. So, to my brother. Cheers. 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 A toast to my father is uh, Patricio Miguel Rodriguez. And I lost him about three years ago. And what he meant to me, he was my dad. He was like a, a mountain. You know, when you're a kid, the first thing you know is your father. And he sets the tone for everything else, for you going out into the world. And just seeing him during his last days, it was um, quite a re uh, rewarding experience in a way, even though it was hard. But So I start by toasting my dad. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers. to that. Thank you. Mm, I guess I felt like when my dad died, I felt like it was just a learning experience. It was like a, a father teaching a son how to ride a bike or throw a ball, um, tie shoelaces. So it's sort of a natural progression, I guess, if you think about the images of tying your shoelaces, riding a bike, driving a car, watching your father, whoever you, you're on his deathbed, or mother. Yeah, so it's almost like an... Um, yeah, we teach each other so he could teach his kids. It's a sort of passing down of rituals, I guess. Hosting my dad. Cheers. 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 Thank you.